So I'm going to show you how to set up Atmel Studio um, to work with one of these little Arduino Nano devices. Uh, so this is a pretty useful thing to do um, since we use Atmel Studio a lot when it comes to uh, sort of different types of um, devices and it has some more advanced debug features in the future that you can use. It's very similar to the Arduino uh, environment, so the, the language is the same and stuff like that. Um, we need to do a little bit of configuration, so I'm going to walk you through that. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to have Atmel Studio. Um, so you can download this, so Atmel Studio 7 this video is based on. Um, and so you can download this for Windows um, from the, the Atmel website. Uh, when you install, one of the things you're going to come across is there's an option for what devices to support um, and you'll need to make sure you have this 8-bit microcontroller features. You don't necessarily need anything else so um, you know don't worry about some of the other devices if you don't have the space. Okay so the next thing we need to do after that's installed is get our Arduino device talking to our computer. So I have it on a breadboard here. You don't need it on a breadboard necessarily if you don't have pins on it yet. Um, all we need to do right now, so don't worry about having pins on it, just plug it in with a USB cable. Um, and I've got a program on it now, so it's blinking. But what you want to see is there's a few LEDs on that thing. Um, and move my computer over here. Uh, you've got the power one. So one, two, three, the third from the left there, that power LED should be on. Um, and it says power right on it. The other one, you know, could be blinking depending on what's programmed on there. Um, so the next thing is that we're going to open the Windows Device Manager. The easiest way to do this is just type dev management oops, dot msc. So this is a little handy shortcut um, to open Device Manager. So this is on Windows 10. If you're on Windows 7, you might have to do start run or something like that. But it will always work to open the Device Manager. Um, and what you should see is there's this section called Ports, Common LPT. Um, so if I unplug my Arduino device, uh, what's going to happen, so if I unplug this, then all of a sudden Atmel, uh, the, the device manager is going to change. Um, and there might be different ports listed here. In this case, it actually disappeared fully. But what I want to see is when I plug that Arduino in, I need to figure out what the COM port is. So in my case, it's coming up here as COM3. And you can see it says USB serial CH340. Um, the best way to check though is to, to figure out what device disappears and reappears when you plug it back in. Now the other thing that might happen is you might not have it in this COM port section yet. If you have a little explanation mark like that, um, it means it actually needs some drivers. So you can try um, just hitting right click and hit update drivers and it's gonna search automatically on Windows Update for the drivers. Um, hopefully it's able to find them. You can also try installing the Arduino IDE. So um, normally this is the Arduino IDE we'd be using. So you can also try installing that IDE, um, which might come with drivers. Um, and if not, there's some other resources. So it's this, this Arduino Nano clone is what you want. So, you know, if you search like Arduino Nano clone drivers, um, you should find some uh, some fixes for it, you know, so there's various, like, here's how you get it working. So that's what we want, um, to, to deal with. And, you know, the, the, the issue is the Arduinos change a little bit over time, especially these cheap clone ones. Um, so what I'm saying just works might not be the case in the future. Okay. So anyway, we now know, assume this works. We now know that we have COM3. Um, then the final thing we need to do um, so I'm going to use this with COM3, is set up the external tools um, stuff in Atmel Studio. So we've made, there's a handy little um, zip file here. So if I download this, what you need to do is this is a zip file. And this has the, um, the thing that talks to the bootloader in it. So what you need to do is right click on this and hit 7-zip or you know if you just have Windows so here I have a 7-zip install but if you just had the Windows stuff you could just um, open this hit extract 
And we just need to copy this somewhere that we can use it. So maybe I'm going to put it in colon documents um, AVR dude pro. So let's say I'm going to put it here. We need to know where this is because you're going to have to find it again in a second. Um, and it's going to pop up the extracted files when complete. So that's fine. So you, you need to make sure you extract them. That's the critical part. And just keep this folder hanging around because we'll, we'll use it in a second. Okay, so now I'm going to open Atmel Studio. Um, so by default, what's going to happen is there's probably going to be some wizard stuff that pops up. So you can close all that to get to just a blank page like this. Um, and what we're going to do is under the Tools menu, you're going to see if you have this External Tools option. Um, if you don't have that option, that's fine. What you might have to do is under Tools Select Profile, switch to the Advanced Profile. Um, depending on the version of Atmel Studio, this is sometimes needed, sometimes not. So I think this one, for example, doesn't actually need it. So yeah, so here I already have it. And I actually had one configured already. I'll just delete that so it looks like you have it. Um, so if we have tools, external tools, just go through and click on that. Um, give your tool a name. So I suggest nano download, so it's kind of standard. Um, then on the command, all you're going to do is, you know, I just, wherever I just extracted this AVR dude prog, I'm going to copy that directory. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to select the nano download.bat. So, um, these directions are a little different from any previous direction because these have been slightly simplified, um, and it should hopefully just work in your system. Okay, so we now have nano download.bat as the command. We now need some arguments, um, and you can just copy them off the GitHub page here. And so copy this whole thing. Make sure you get the closing um, quotation here. It's very critical that it copies exactly. So, and just page through it and take a look. So we have a COM port number, there's a space here, um, and then quotations, and this special project dear debug target name.hex. So this is going to be replaced with the file that you actually are downloading to the device. It automatically replaces it. The only thing you have to change is COM4. I'm going to change to COM3. And this, again, matches what I specified in my device manager here. And then we click Use Output Window. And what this does is Use Output Window is going to show us debug information um, so we can know if this thing is working or not. Okay, so if that all worked, you should be able to go Tools, Nano Download, and you just run that tool. And what's going to happen, there's no project open right now, so it's not actually going to work properly. Um, but what you can see is that it ran a tool, some stuff happened, and it says AVR Dude EXE done. So that's perfect. That means everything worked. Um, we're gonna the next part of it's gonna use an example. So if that worked, you can um, you know you can stop watching. I'm gonna go through some common errors that you might see. So these are also mentioned a little bit on this project page. Um, so one thing might be is that the um, and these errors you might get you know not just now but in the future. If you get absolutely no output here. What actually happened is um, oops, if this is not a valid executable or Windows is somehow blocking it. So if I put the wrong file name here, right? So I just changed that file name so it's wrong and I try to run it. You can see there's no error. So in this case, there's some output that's still here from the previous one. We could clear it. But if I have an error in that executable, it just doesn't give me any debug information. So if you want to check you've, you've done it right and you've extracted stuff, um, what you should do is run command prompt. So if you just type CMD and hit enter, you'll get a command prompt. And then on your external tools, copy this whole command here and just run it here. So I just, I just control C on the other one and I right click to paste. And then I hit enter. And you'll see it says not recognized. So in this case, I have the wrong file name. Um, you know, maybe I copied something wrong. Yeah, you could get an error like Windows saying, you know, not allowed to execute. You might need to go through um, and hit this batch file under properties. Um, and you might have to unblock this. 
right? So there's this checkbox here because you downloaded it from the big bad internet. Um, you might have to check this box to say, unblock it, I trust this file. Um, and you can look at the file to see that it's actually working. So what you should see is this. So if I fix that, what you see is nano download.bat running. Um, you know, it's not actually doing anything, that's fine. We just wanna see that we get the aviardo.exe done. Um, the other thing I should mention is that if you plug in different COM ports, so if we go to my laptop here and if we look at, let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Um, this is very slow. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna take my, my device and I'm gonna plug it from this COM port to this COM port. And what happens, well, what happens is that um, it gets assigned a different COM port number. So now it's assigned to COM4 instead of COM3. All this means is that I'm gonna have to go in here and change COM3 to COM4. And now if I run it, it'll detect the new COM port number. But be aware, every time you change the USB port it's plugged in, the COM port number is gonna change. Um, so now that I fix that, oops. Again, I just had my bad thing in here. So if I run nano download, it should just work. Um, so that's the most likely problem you're gonna get is related to the, um, and you can double click the output window here if it's not shown. Um, the, the most likely problem you're gonna get is related to um, this thing. So, and make sure, you know, you can also sh show, so if you don't have this output window, um, you should have them under view output so you can always go view output and make sure you select show output from nano download, which is our tool. When you when you run the nano download, it's automatically gonna switch, but that's the, um, the most likely problem you're gonna run into. All right, with that set up, um, go to the second video that's just getting a basic blinky example working, and that'll show you how to, um, to, to program this thing.